Okay, so I will get started. Hello, everyone. I am Mrs. Higgins from the Acting Conservatory. Thank you so much for coming. And I will be hosting this very special masterclass Q&A. It's very special for a couple reasons. One, we're going to be focusing on one of my favorite films this year. And I get to talk to two of my favorite people who created it, Natalie and Enon Champagneur. Hello, thank you so much for coming. You're having us. Um, so let me give you a little bit of a background and how things are going to go today. I'm going to introduce you all to them. We're going to watch a trailer for their film that was released this weekend. And then um, I have some questions for them. And then at the end, we will get to your questions. So as we're talking, think of some fun questions that you would like to ask them. And they work in so many different aspects of film so it's it's pretty awesome i'm very excited so let me give you a little background on them they are a husband and wife filmmaking team and their new film that we'll be focusing on today paper spiders stars lily taylor and stefania owen which won best film best screenplay and best actress at the boston film festival and is playing in theaters and on demand right now it opened on the 7th essentially for mother's day and also mental health awareness month we'll get into that later um their first film enon's directorial debut was the thriller the millionaire tour starring dominic monaghan and agnes bruckner and then they next wrote beautiful and twisted starring rob lowe paz vega and candace bergen Fun fact, Natalie is also a marriage and family therapist and draws from her experience when crafting stories that handle psychological subject matters, such as paper spiders. And Enon and Natalie live in Los Angeles with their three children. So they do everything and it's extremely impressive to me. Um, so like I said before, we have students and teachers from all departments. So we're going to try to sprinkle in a little bit of everything for you all today. And so I know some of you have seen the trailer already, but just to make sure everyone's on the same page, I'm going to show you the trailer of their film, Paper Spiders, right now. Okay, can everyone see my YouTube? Yep. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. here because of my mom. Me too. Mom, please don't ask me a million questions. Oh, come on now. Give me some credit. Hey! Hi. Does anyone call you Danny? Uh, not Where really. Where are your man, parents no. from? You don't have to answer. She's always been quirky. I can't help it. I'm inquisitive. Maybe a little neurotic. It's loaded with saturated fats. I clog your arteries. Oh. Bet nothing like this. What are you doing? Shh, shh, shh. The neighbor threw a rock at me. What? Yeah. I was doing laundry, I heard a bang. Aren't you scared that he's gonna murder you in his sleep and bury you in his yard? Oh my God. Well, I wasn't until now. She thinks our neighbor is stalking her, climbing on our roof. Every little noise she believes is an attack. She's paying me to follow him. How do I convince my mom that it's all in her head? That's gonna be hard. She's off the edge. I'm not gonna sit back and do nothing. Do you have any idea what I'm going through? Did it even occur to you that I just got fired from my job? There is a mistake waiting to happen. What he did to us, my own daughter, he turned against me. Please, Mom, please. I love that trailer. It is so good. Oh, it is so good. Um, so let's dive into it, shall we? And I will tell you all how to see the film at the end. So very exciting. Um, so let's just dive right in. What is your inspiration for Paper Spiders? 
Ah, well, sadly, um, it is based on or inspired by a true story. Um, my relationship with my mom, um, and my mom was an incredibly sweet, loving woman, um, but she was also a victim of delusional disorder, um, which is basically paranoia. And um, we as writers end up processing the things that we care about and that are important to us. And this was something extremely important to us. Um, and, and we started writing. Actually, we, we have so many projects that we truthfully didn't think that this would get made, yeah. uh, which kind of helped the writing process and just liberating it. Yeah. And, uh, and just, you know, writing without filters. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of like the origin of it. And then, um, of course, as writers, we, we improvise, you know, a lot of this, not everything is based on, on reality, but that was like the root of it. Um, and we didn't even think we would tell anyone. Oh yeah. That it's based on truth, oh yeah. No, not at all. When we were going through it, um, it was very difficult, and a lot of, a lot of, I mean, those kinds of things were, were, you know, it was just, it felt like a betrayal to just go out and, mm -hmm. and tell people that. Even after we wrote it, we, we, my mom passed away, by the way. Um, that's what I'm referring to in past tense. But we, um, we didn't want to tell, and it just felt like. The wrong thing to do and then when we were um when we were filming it people were coming up to us you know just uh, asking us and kind of almost assuming that it was based on uh, reality and then so we sort of started to say it and the more we talked about it we realized how kind of common it is that people know somebody who has some sort of you know even if it's addiction or someone they love that they're trying to help in some way um so a lot, we just found that a lot of people could relate to that to that issue um so we started opening up about it um, and realizing it's you know more and more common than we actually thought. Um, and then we felt like there was also a value to opening up about it and talking about it and kind of destigmatizing the shame. I think that what prevented us from talking to people about it before was just it, it's there's something you feel shame about about yeah. dealing with a problem like this. But um, but it's actually very important to talk about it in the open because then people can seek help and people can can find resources that they may not know about before. So. Once we started sharing the screenplay, people would come to us and say, "This is my story. I went through something very similar with, you know, with my 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 mother, my, my father, my sibling, my friend." And people started really opening up to us, and we felt kind of compelled to opening up to open up to them. And we realized, wow, there's actually value in talking about it. And uh, um, and then we started being open about the fact that it's uh, that it's based on truth. But uh, mm -hmm. there's also a lot of it that is that is made up and it's just the story. But the heart of the story mm -hmm. is entirely real. I think that's that's amazing and it's so interesting that it wasn't your intention to actually say that it's based on a real story but i i love that you felt compelled to support the people that felt so connected to your film i just i just think that that is very brave and it's just such a wonderful thing to do for people so thank you so much for that um and so you're talking about that you wrote the film you know, and you also directed it, and then Natalie, you cameoed in it. Were there any other pieces that you were in charge of? I think, uh, unlike other projects before, we had the very great fortune, first of all, to work with wonderful collaborators. So, I mean, it just it takes so many talented people to make a movie like this. You know, producers who are amazing and crew people who, I mean, there's really, it's, I mean, you see two people here, but there's really, there's a whole village of people, you know, making a movie like this. However, we've had the fortune of, of having a lot of creative control. So we actually ended up doing, you know, so much of it. I mean, I, I edited the trailer, I'm doing the graphic design for it, I'm doing the, the marketing for it. I'm, uh, um, I, and, 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 and I'm kind of, yeah, the poster, and, and, and a part of it is almost to kind of like make up with that experiences before we were completely shut out of the process afterwards. We didn't even know when the film is coming And that's out. more true to Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is the, the exception, yeah. So, a, you did the poster? I didn't know you did the poster, but I love the poster. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I love it. Thank you. So, uh, um, yeah, so I mean, it's just it, it, it's nice when you're when when it's your baby and you care so much about a project. You just know that no one else, as much as they try, will kind of do what you know you feel is, is right for it. Even you know, so yeah, uh, we we just we really enjoy kind of uh, um, right. creatively trying to nourish the project uh, now that it's coming out to the world. And uh, uh, yeah, but 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 again, it's with collaboration with so many. I mean, wonderful producers, a great distributor publicity companies doing so much of course they're making of the movie 
you know, for, from the DP down to the to the PA. I mean, like you just you can't. It takes so many people to just get a movie made. Yeah. You know, it's uh people don't understand how valuable the the guy stopping traffic in the streets so to the scene is. Without them, you have nothing. Or the so, so it it really takes so many. And really, we, we had an exceptionally nice, sweet group of people I was working gonna on the say, movie. Yeah. We got lucky family. because yeah. a lot of times yeah. that's not the case. Um, yeah. And it just, it, we got, it starts from the top and it trickles down. This wasn't the case. This <laughs> one was, but, but this one, this one, I mean, yeah. we, we, we've had producers who, you know, we, we couldn't even, you know. Have By this one, he's pointing to the other. The millionaire board, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, and it actually ended up kind of like bruising us because, yeah. uh, I mean, you just, you put so much into a movie and then you're like, you know, you have to beg them to even be in the editing room to, to be involved in, uh, in, in, in the cup. And they're like, oh, you know, we don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> but uh, um, but uh, this was the, the doing everything uh, uh, with, with the collaboration of wonderful um, friends, but, uh, but really we had the luck of being in charge of everything. That's a great, that is a great opportunity, especially for something that is so close to you personally. That's fabulous. So I'd like to kind of go through um, the order of operations, um, kind of starting with the writing process. Um, you can talk about Paper Spider specifically or anything that you've written. Um, was there anything that you've learned about the writing process that surprised you before getting into it? I mean, you want to take that one or, what? I mean, I, I think that for the next time we kind of realized that um, like when you write a script, you know, it's like in beginning to end and you, you assume in your head, you know, it's, that's what's going to get shot. And, and a lot, oftentimes, you know, actors want to improvise and warm up and they want lines to, to practice with. And so we found ourselves writing on set, you know, just like really fast, you know, okay, duh, 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 this will happen before the scene. And if that was something that we had put more time, you know, kind of put more time into and, and thought about, I feel like for the next time yeah. we could we could be more prepared with with just scenes that that may end up being in the film that were just kind of written like uh, in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, like, 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 fill in that blank. An, an hour before you before you shoot the scene without without having slept at night. But but uh, I think that the other the other reason for it is that we just a personality thing. We're both very concise. We get to the point. Not right now when we're having an interview. <laughs> But, but usually, unlike people who just, you know, write 300 pages just to figure out where a story is going, we know where things are going, we cut to the chase, we, we get in late, leave early and move on. And it's very good when you submit a script for production companies and for writing, because, yeah, it's just flowing. But then sometimes you find yourself on set with a scene that you thought worked well, and you're like, oh, wow, the scene feels abbreviated. It feels like we haven't even gotten to... To, to the flesh of the scene, let's let's explore it. Let's I mean, it, it's something it's so brief that we really didn't get to the meat of it. And then you start, you know, improvising. And sometimes, you know, and our actors did a phenomenal job of improvising. But not every actor has that ability. They could be amazing, but it's also not the responsibility. I mean, sometimes, yeah, sometimes movies are you know rely on improvisation. But sometimes an actor dealing with everything else that they have to do. You don't necessarily have the ability to just you know improvise great on, on, on the spot and it's not the responsibility nor should you put it on their shoulders especially if that's not the style of, of filmmaking that, you, that you're doing so i think that for next time we just need to know um, that when we have scenes that are kind of short and to the point sometimes we need to prepare just more extra lines like more you know just more things to to try in case in case you should have seen it like oh wow, that was good but it felt like this is 20 seconds of the scene it's 20 minutes. So if anyone I mean, is writing yeah. 300 pages, that's yeah. no, no diss yeah. on you. Maybe you're doing the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> you have more material. So you brought up something interesting. Um, you know, and I wanted to talk about your directing style. So you started touching on that. And what do you, what do you think your directing style is? And what do you expect from actors on the set? If you had asked me that question before I made this movie, I would not really consider this movie to be an example of my directing style because I entirely put style as very secondary for this, to the, for this movie, to, to the performances and, and the reality of it. I think that naturally I gravitate more towards thrillers and Natalie gravitates more toward comedy. We kind of met in the middle with a, with a drama. A but, sad drama. But, but our, our, we also with a lot of humor that came from your personality and, 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 your, and your comedy skills. But um, 
But for me, usually the projects that inspire me are, are a lot more stylized. And I just knew whenever I, whenever I gave into the temptation of stylizing things a little too much, I felt a falsity. And I really tried to, to hold back and really serve the actors and support them. Because, I mean, it's such a slice of life movie. And I felt like I don't want anyone to, to be watching it and being like, uh, you know, here's a director trying to, you know, try to be flashy. So I really, really restrain myself. Um, but again, I think that part of, of what you do um, as a director is you try to serve the material um, rather than, than the other way around. And some projects, you know, uh, even some that you, that you read recently um, are called for very stylized, you know, approaches. And it would be a shame not to, not to give them, you know, all, all that's necessary for that. And, and some just, you, you just need to focus on the, on the performances. An example for that, uh, excuse me for blabbing, um, is uh, usually as a director, you really like controlling, you know, camera movement and lighting and being able to, 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 to get the scene to look beautiful. For acting, that's very often not great because then the actors on top of, you know, doing a very difficult scene have to worry about the mark and it might not end the light. Or, oh, this time I was out of focus and this I need to worry about moving it. And when I say this line in the reverse shot, I landed by the window. So now it, all those things that you just, that, that are sometimes distract the actors from just being, from just doing the job. And even very, very skilled actors who are very good at those things. Sometimes you, sometimes you, you just need to tell them, listen, you do whatever you need to do. It's our job to just to just be there. We're gonna sacrifice the lighting. If the lighting's not gonna be great. The some moments will be dark. You know, some some shots you know will not be as nicely composed. We're gonna go and held in the scene, and we're just gonna cover you as much. And if we and then if we're shooting these two cameras right now, and the cameras are going to cross at some points, and you know, yeah, they won't be able to use that, but but we're going to do our best to just capture everything that we can because of the performance. Uh, the example for that especially was the police scene in the movie. And, uh, um, and I just knew, I wanted the actors, it was such a big moment that I wanted the actors to just have the freedom to be in that moment. And not worry about, I am I now like, you know, not in the, in the light? I didn't want to worry about any of that. I just wanted them to be in the moment. And don't worry, the cameras will, you know, will just go around to it. And, and they really were. Like a lot of that was improvised. This yeah. is like for those that haven't seen the movie, because then there's a big yeah. like showdown with climate crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. climate yeah. crisis. And so a lot of it was just improvised, where it, the camera was just there and go. You know, like for, for the same reason, by the way, that, that, that I said before, that uh, um, when we wrote the scene on the page, I felt uh, it was probably two pages, and and you know, it seemed to work great. And it worked great, you know, on screen, but it just felt, wow, this was so brief. We, we didn't really get into the middle of the scene. So then we told the, you know, so then you start running rears. And also very, very often you have a certain idea of what things are going to develop, but suddenly, let's say you, you write a scene like that, that has a mother and a daughter in a situation where the police is involved. And uh, but when you write it, you just focus on the mother and the daughter. And suddenly you never really think of the policemen as characters. They're almost like extras to just like, well, and suddenly they start saying things and they start behaving in the way the policemen would. And one of them was a policeman. And suddenly there's another element of reality to it. And you realize, oh, wow, that actually changes the reality of the scene. Now suddenly they're, they're you know, they would behave differently or they, how would they respond to someone trying to restrain them? wasn't what we intended in the scene so so you need to be able to also accommodate. sometimes if they say separate issue but if they say a line they get paid suddenly so they the really wanted yeah. to say a line yeah. <laughs> and we're like but but that doesn't yeah. even fit and in the they, scene yeah, oh. and sometimes yeah it's just always do that they're like yeah. they, they throw in a line and you're like i know you're trying to get paid as a seg actor you know rather than <laughs> an extra but, but it's uh but we don't actually need to say a line right now but uh, but sometimes but actually, really helps, yeah actually. yeah and you realize yeah you really yeah. you know they're saying it because it feels right to not just be silent in that scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you go with it. Mm -hmm. I, I love hearing that process because when I was watching it, there was such a sincerity to this film. And it makes so much sense that you decided, no, we're, we're serving the story. Whatever the story needs, that's what it will get. And you you could absolutely feel it. I, I could. And so I think, I think that that's so 
admirable because you're right there are some artistic voices that think oh no what what I want is the way but it's the story so that that is awesome um and you have such fabulous actors I mean from from the one-liners to the leads like your actors were amazing and I wanted to talk about the casting process a little bit um especially the casting process the difference between lily taylor who plays the mom so she is definitely seasoned famous that type of thing how does that casting process work versus stefania owen who's a little newer and so i'm thinking stefania auditioned anyway i just comparing that and we were I, I, especially because it's funny with previous This movie too was pre-COVID, which shot in 2019. But uh, by the time this project came in, the casting director was was in the room. We're mostly getting tapes. I mean, you, you guys probably know better than us how how often auditions on our own tape versus uh, versus in the room. But we barely saw people in the room. 95% of what we saw was 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 on tape. Also, people submitting from all over the country, not necessarily in LA. Uh, Stefania may have been in New Zealand or New York when she did that. So um, so we're watching a lot of tapes, which was also you know convenient, but uh, maybe though sometimes you wish you were in the room to give them an adjustment and see, and see if they could have done things a little bit differently that the casting director wouldn't have thought about. But, uh, but we were watching everything together, which was so helpful. because We picked two scenes. We picked the dramatic scene. We picked a, yeah. like a light, more lighthearted scene to see like how they would do it. And it was interesting because some would do really well with, you know, one type of scene, but then wouldn't really, you know, it wouldn't, the other scene wouldn't work or they would be stronger. You could see that they were usually stronger yeah, yeah, yeah. in one yeah. scene than the other, which yeah. was fine. Um, I think it mainly came down to what did we have enough? Like, yeah, like so, so, so I guess we'll start with, with, with Stefania. So it, it, we'll talk about Lily Taylor in a second. With Stefania's role, it was actually really, it was really tricky. We saw so many good girls who really gave good performances and you can tell how much they wanted the roles and, 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 and how much they tried and they were very, very good. It wasn't it. And I feel like it, it's maybe a little bit similar to dating. Someone can check off a lot of like, but, but why are they not right? They're not right. They're, they're not and you like try to make it work yeah. because, you know, the followers and whatever, yeah, exactly. you know. Yeah, but, oh yeah. And, but, and now like everyone, yeah, everyone's submitting, oh, she has 60 million followers on Instagram and all stuff. But it's very tempting, but, but especially with the movie that relies on performances, we just didn't want to make those, those sacrifices. And I remember, uh, um, and also I feel like because it's so personal, and whoever we cast knew, she didn't need to look like Natalie just because it's kind of like Natalie's story, but she needed to encapsulate the gist of who she is as a person. And she needed to be extremely sympathetic and empathetic. And that is a quality that I feel is, is totally separate from, from, from an acting skill. You can have the most amazing actor and for whatever reason, they don't evoke empathy. Who knows what micro expressions or, or you know, do that. But for whatever reason, they just don't do that. And some actors have it in spades. Sometimes an artist, Stefania, happens to be also an incredible actress, but um, really off the charts. But, uh, um, but sometimes they're not even that good of an actor, but you just see their face and it's, uh, you know, it, it just, it, you know, it, it, it has that quality. Actually, it was interesting. The ones, I feel like the auditions that went the best were the ones that they actually weren't trying as hard. Yeah. They were more themselves. Yeah. Whereas the ones were, there was, um, there was one, like she was, she's a great actress. Um, she's really well known. She has tons of followers. Um, and she really wanted the part. She auditioned really multiple wanted. times, yeah. but, and she was trying so hard. Um, and, and that actually didn't serve her like that, yeah. that, that went against her a little bit. Yeah. There's um, the thought of like, Oh, that people expect tears here. Let me like burst out with like as much like the, and, and, but, but also, and I think that that's something important for actors to, to remember because obviously it's such a difficult life of rejection and 99% of it is going to be rejection and it's not about you. It, 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 it's, or, it, it, it's hard for, it, I, from the other side of the, of, the, of the line, you're looking for a certain person, a certain face, a certain something, and you don't even know what you're looking for until you see it. We saw so many actresses and we're like, really? Are we, it's kind of like dating. Are we just being too picky? I mean, mm -hmm. but they are good. But they come from they, a great family. Good. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they're so great but, in that movie. We love them in that yeah. TV show. But they're so good. But they're not right. And Why they're not right? They're not the person that we imagined. Stefano's edition came in last, or at least it was last, because once we saw her, we're like, okay, we found our melody. 
but uh, um, so otherwise we would have seen another hundred girls. But uh, um, um, we, I think that I was working in the office and you were in the bedroom and we both watch it separately and we watched the audition. It just came in like late at night, you know, we watched it and we just met and we're like, we, whoever Melanie, right? We actually had another girl yeah. in mind before her. Yeah. Um, we were pretty sure. Um, she was 10 years older than the role. She was yeah. really good. But Which is the only reason because she was terrific. She, was, she yeah. was so good. And we met with her and she was so lovely in person that we just, if only she weren't 10 years older, and it wasn't even the, the, the fact that she looked older because she, she actually looked kind of young. It was the fact that she had the sophistication of a 30 year old and not the naivete of a 17 year old. So finally it was 21 when we shot it. But it was just like this empathy that, you know, we have three children and children can destroy your house and, 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 and you know, and yesterday pour paint all over your bed. And, yeah. you, know, and, and, and you can be, and you, and, and, and you want to be angry with them, but there's so much empathy. You look at their cute little faces and you just, oh, you just want to hug them. And, and so it's hard. So that quality of empathy for, especially people who are younger, it, 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 it's meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. We so, want sorry. a baby. Yeah, yeah. Not also, but, but we really we, felt, did. we wanted like yeah. a baby face and we, we wanted like, like a like a baby yeah. person out like someone yeah. who's just young hasn't been through it and, yeah. and somebody would be really affected yeah. by what's going and on and the other actress who was really just as good yeah. would have given just as good a, a role and she didn't even look older it, i mean she was 27 people would have bought her at 17 no one would be watching the movie thinking oh she's not 17 but that, that, i mean that wasn't the issue she just had the sophistication of a 30 year old who felt like here's like a woman and we needed a girl and, you know, and, and, and it, it was painful. We were already, we were like a day away. She was the best per person that we saw. We said, oh, whatever, you know, okay, so we'll, we won't cast her right. So we'll cast someone a little older as long as she's a great actress. And we were a day away. We told her agent, you know, it was actually really sad. It was sad for us to, to say, you know, we told, we told her agent, um, uh, uh, you know, like expect an offer tomorrow. And, uh, and we already met with her and she was so lovely in person. And we connected and we, we were both like, oh, we have our Melanie. And then Stefano's mission came in and we're like, right, this is, you need, you need, you need an actress who's as great, but looks 17 and, 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 you know, and has an empathy. And Stefania was just so natural and so solid. It's like Stefania did not have a bad take. Yeah. At all. There's not a take that very often, and I think that, that people don't know how much you shape performances in editing, even for great actors. You do five takes, and if you put one of the other four, people wouldn't think that the performance is good. But but some actors just Stefania every take, spot on solid. It's uh she's also she's done a lot. I mean she's not a she's not yeah, a real experience. you know experience. But also it's it's uh she has it. You know it's, uh, she was really she was fantastic. Absolutely. And I, I love that you're bringing this up because I know all of the acting teachers at this school tell actors all the time if you don't get it it's not you don't give up it's not that you're not talented and so thank you for saying that in, in so, real life so easy to feel that way even as writers too like and, you know that your, your script didn't get picked up there's a year of your life gone you know it's right like, yeah. especially as acting. We, we live a life of rejection yeah. all the time most of our projects never get made never get you yeah, know sure. as a director i get rejected all the time but i feel so like sure. as an actor it's even like yeah. i don't even i mean kudos to all those you, you know all you guys because it's so hard to not take it personally but I, you you really shouldn't i mean yeah. i mean it's it's really not you it's whatever like that yeah. person that that writer had in yeah. mind for what they yeah. wanted and, it's and so they specific. don't even know what what they want until they see it and it's very hard the, the, the idea that you can really just go be like that's the one if you don't fit whatever image they have in their minds of what they want the role to be and it doesn't mean very often actually i would say with us we had gorgeous models in the room that we instantly rejected. It, it's not about being pretty enough. On the contrary, very often it's the it, 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 and it's ever you know one time you're too pretty, one time you're 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 too tall, one time you're too short, one time you're too you're too whatever. It, it, it's just that someone has similar to dating. Someone has an idea in their minds of what they want. They want to know it until they see the person, and that person that they see, they may not even do the best audition. For whatever reason it clicked that that's the face that they that they that they're looking and a lot of times it's a blessing when you don't get it because it leads to an opportunity a different one that yeah. you will get so sometimes yeah. things work out yeah. and career things have worked out in a way that some rejections have led to yeah. just different consequences that then led to and some blessings of projects that we did get ended up just being years of doing rewrites on projects that never materialized on the other.
So yeah, that, I mean, you never know, but, uh, but really it's not about you. Of course, as an actor, you want to be as prepared and do the best job that you can. But if you don't get a role 99% of the time, they're just, they're, they had a different face in mind. It's not right. So here's a kind of a expanding question on that. And I know that actors are interested in this. Is there anything, obviously 99% of the time, if you get rejected, it's not within your control. Is there anything that you've seen either in the room or on tape that would lose a non-famous, obviously, actor a job? Um, and you don't have to name names, but have you seen any anything that actors have done that would lose them the job? Um, I, I would say a few things. First of all, most of the auditions that we got, actresses were really doing their best. There is some, some even trying too hard, but really like most of the auditions were great. Some auditions, even from well-known actresses who like on big TV shows and all that stuff, we just felt like they weren't taking it seriously. Like for example, they're doing like mother-daughter yes, scenes. I was say that. And instead of getting instead of getting like another woman to read with them, they have the boyfriend, you know, just like read the lines. And it was very distracting. Yeah, but, but, but even more so, how can you, I mean, if you're Meryl Streep, you know, if, if you're talking to, to a dude and he's supposed to be your mother, I mean, I, you, you're not a magician. You don't have it in your brain. You can't look at a dude and be like, oh, this is my mother. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> that as an actor so so i mean if, if you're serious about a role i mean yeah i mean just try. at least try yeah have, have someone on the phone do, do something and, and and it's and it's not so I, some of those things just felt like i mean come on like, you do not really care about it you just have to like you know shoot something in your i mean it's okay that you're shooting it in your closet that, that's fine that, i mean no one cares about the lighting but uh, unless you can't see your face and then you just sort of mirror yourself subconsciously but uh, but I mean, the, if you have a role with a mother, at least try to get a female actress. Yeah. So that was one. Actually, what what helped was sometimes people got their their mom, so they got like yeah. what it was called for. Like they yeah. got their moms, and you can see something come yeah. through there. Like that felt like really authentic. Yeah. There's a reality to it. Yeah. yeah. So that actually helped. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the people that just didn't take it seriously were the people that you yeah. could feel. Like, and, and the people that were trying so hard. I mean, again, yeah. again, we did we did a comedic scene and a dramatic scene, and in both scenes. Some actors don't necessarily have the comedic chops or can't tune in as, as, as you know, let's say for some people, it's a little harder to, to shed tears and all that stuff. They probably would be better off not trying to force it, but by trying to force it, it, it just, it became forced. It felt like acting with a capital A. And I feel like we would have preferred to just see no tears, to just see a natural performance um, rather than trying so hard to bring tears that it, that it just becomes, you know, over the top. So I think that very often actors try too hard. And also, um, again, sorry for um, I love it. The, I think at the end of the day, it, I don't remember who said that kind of like every actor is an island and, and we all have our personalities and you can go 10%, 20% around that. You can go 50 or 100%. If you're a certain type of a person, you're probably not going to, to be cast is like a totally different role. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you don't have that, if you're not the role, it doesn't matter if you're, that you're such a great skilled actor and you can try so hard to be something else, you're probably not that role. So if you don't connect with the role emotionally because it's not really you. And yes, yeah, some actors, especially if they're very seasoned, can really be like such chameleons that, you know, yeah, one time they'll play a high school student, the next time they'll play a mobster. But, but usually, you're not supposed to do all that. I mean, and actors, I feel like more than everything, my heart goes out to them because they put enormous pressure on themselves that they need to be, they need to be, to do everything. They need to be good at this and at that. And if like, and if they can't play the mobster, then that means they're not good enough. No, maybe you just don't have the mobster in you. That's okay. You won't get cast as a mobster. You'll get cast as the, as the high school student, that's 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 fine. Or you get cast as the as the. So like as, as close as you can yeah. find yourself in it. Yeah. Um, also with writing. And then try to bring yourself. Same thing with writing. Yeah. Like yeah. That's what, like, if I can sum up. Yeah. Six years of school. That's what that's what I would yeah. say. Really, if you can yeah. find yourself in it, in the role or in in, in the material, um, it, it'll show, and yeah. and that'll be your best. Yeah. I love I love that. So I I will do one more one more of my questions and then I'll open it up to the group. So start preparing your questions, everybody. Um, so in general, what was your favorite lesson doing, creating, and maybe even cameoing, Natalie, in paper spiders? What was your favorite lesson? 
You want me to take it and then you'll take it? Start it so I can cut you off. Okay. <laughs> um, there is a, with paper spiders and other projects, very often you met with challenges that are just beyond your control. You, you're planning to film, you know, you, you change your entire schedule so that, you know, it wouldn't be raining on your big exterior scene and you're filming in Syracuse where, the, where everyone is wonderful, but the rain is shifty. And on your one day that you're like, this is supposed to be the sunny day. All the forecasts are saying today is sunny. It's, What's you your know- favorite lesson? Your favorite. Yeah, I'm getting oh, there. Oh, sorry, yeah. So, um, so then, yeah, so control the rain. So uh, um, it, it's going to rain and it kills you inside because you realize, okay, I'm going to lose one of the big scenes in my movie. Usually things tend to work out and it's, uh, and it's a confidence that you can't have if you, if you haven't been scared to death many times that this is going to fall apart and it's just not going to happen. And there's a lot of stress that it's like, this is our big exterior scene. We have this location for one day. It said that at 6 a.m. it would stop raining. It's 3 p.m. It's still raining. Things will work out. Yeah. I'm not saying just lean back and be like, oh, whatever, yeah, you know, don't leave it up to that. Obviously, do every single thing within your power to, to solve problems and you need to be prepared for, for problem solving. But I would say that with time, with experience, I've learned that usually have a little bit of optimism that you'll find a way. Um, and, uh, and I think that just because the, the stress of, you know, it's our first day of production, it's, it, we want it to be a short day, but we're filming eight pages today and our grip truck isn't working and we don't have any of our equipment and it's our first day of production and we're already going downhill. First day of production of Paper Spiders, first location. You'll work it out. Yeah. It, it, it will work itself out. Have a little bit of optimism. And that ties into also yeah. enjoying the journey, just in yeah. general, just in yeah. life too. There's some advice, yeah. like just enjoy the journey. Like we're always one to yeah. think ahead and think, okay, well, what's yeah. next and what's this and what's, what about now? And what do I, what about tomorrow? And, and just about enjoying because then it's gone. And, yeah. and so, and things do work out in the end and nothing that seems, things might seem like the end of the world, but they're not. Um, this isn't meant to be a psychology lesson, but that's also true. Oh, yeah. well, that's good. I mean, it's art mimics life right so yes absolutely i love i love that so much and such a positive lesson um so if you have a question go ahead and send them um in the chat or feel free to raise your hand and i will also post in the chat for everybody the paper spiders website and so you can go to that and see where you can actually see it it's on amazon it's on youtube it's, it's everywhere it's also in theaters too in los angeles but you know be safe <laughs> um, is, I know uh, Dylan Barton had a question. Great, Dylan, let's go for it. Thank you guys so much for coming today and talking to us. This has been really cool. It was, I, I want to watch this movie. It looks, it looks really good, by the way. And um, so my question was, uh, with the writing process, were there other characters other than um, you, Natalie, and your mom? other characters in this story that were based off of the personal experience and um another part to the question um was there a certain limit of personal experience that you guys wanted to have in your storytelling or was it kind of open or limited cool question thank you um i think that it was i think that the best characters and really like this took a long time to learn um, come from, for me at least, come from being based off of somebody I know. Um, it, that's like the seed of it. Um, so yeah, like a lot of the, the characters were inspired by, by people I know or would want to know um, <laughs> or, would, or would think like that would be interesting if you put this person that I do know in a situation with this you know, fictional character that I don't know. Um, the like yeah, I was going to think of the 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 boyfriend role had some similarities to some similar things to what I went through. Um, the all the not the addiction part that was big, that was from like the psychology background. Um, the 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 boss, the mom's boss. Well, I don't know how many seen the movie, so this is probably yeah. just talking to the wall. But never mind. Anyway, <laughs> a bunch of characters were based on 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 inspirations that of people that I had met. Or even like one time there's a line in the movie um, where, where the police officer tells the mom, well, have a nice day. 
And, uh, and she's upset. She's like, it's a little too late for that. That was a line that I was in the CVS uh, getting, getting something for my, my medication for my kid. And, uh, and what this person in front of me was so angry. And the pharmacist was like, I can't get it for you or something. And he's like, and, and the pharmacist was like, thank you. And, and the guy was like, it's a little too late for that. That's and you're like, oh, okay. yeah. So we went <laughs> home and I was again. like, I look, we're looking for a place yeah, to yeah. put that in. But a lot of times I'll just walk around with, with the notepad open on my phone and, and take lines or character ideas of people that inspire me and, and put that. Yeah. And then the second, I don't know if I answered the second part of your question. What did you limit yourself on the truth or yeah. the true story of it? Um, I don't think, I, I don't think that we limited ourselves, but I think that we, at the end of the day, again, as writers, we're serving a narrative, just like as a director, you're serving a story. And just because something was true, didn't mean that it belonged in the movie. But, yeah. Um, when Natalie went through her journey with her mom, she was already a mother of two and a mental health professional herself, a marriage and family therapist. And had me as support, has her family for support. She was not the teenager who had no one to rely on, but that wouldn't serve the story. Um, and also you always ideally try to define your main relationship in the movie and remove, and in this case, you know, we felt like having too many other characters, oh, and here's another family member, so this, even if it was truthful, it just didn't serve the, sure, the story. Sure, there was a lot, there were a lot so, of characters. So, yeah. so I would say that, that more than the, it's more about finding the, the truth of the of the story, the rather than the, the heart of the story, rather than the, the factual truth of the story. I think as Ellie Wiesel said, not every not every yeah, true story. We're so old. Do you, I don't know if anybody knows who Ellie Wiesel other than um, Holocaust survivor. Other than me, <laughs> no, they know. They know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I Go think ahead. he said he's um, uh, a Holocaust survivor and I believe Nobel Peace uh, 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 laureate who was very kind to read my first screenplay. Um, uh, that was a Holocaust, uh, very researched story. Never mind. Anyway, so, so, he, had, so he, had a, he had a line where he said, um, not everything that's truthful is, not everything that is factual is truth, and not everything that is fictional is, is not. And very often you can find the truth in something that isn't, you know, that is fictional and you can create something that's factual but it's still not truthful to an extent so uh i feel like that was uh that was the guiding thought for us mm -hmm. I, I love that thought and just as an aside for everybody if we don't get to your question i'm happy to gather the questions that i see in the chat and i i can email them if they if they have time and i'll send you the answers for sure um lauren i saw your hand go up do so you want to ask your question mm -hmm. Sorry, we have three kids that need to be picked up from school. So. I'm so sorry, I have to go pick them up. But oh, I don't that's wanna... fine, Natalie. Thank you so much. I'll, uh... But you know, we'll stay. Yeah, I'll stay. Yes. <laughs> really nice. Thank you, Thank you so much, Natalie. And when you watch the film, try to find her in it. She's great. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Lauren, go ahead. Ask your question. Hi, first of all, I want to say thank you for meeting with us. This is a little surreal. I watched the trailer for it. A while back and I had it like bookmarked on my computer. I was like, I need to watch this. So just thank you for making this movie. This is awesome and stuff. This is very much a passion project. So I want to know throughout the filmmaking process, was there anything that you did with Miss Lily and with Stefania in order to help preserve or connect them to those personal aspects of your story? First of all, we're very open with them about our story. And I think yeah. really related to it, Lily, and which reminds me, Linda, I didn't get to answer a question about. Well, oh, it's uh, okay. But I'll I'll start with that because it relates to it. So we've been wanting to work with Lily for a long time. We saw we saw her many things, but specifically there was a TV show, American Crime, and her performance was really one of the best performances I remember on TV. I remember Nelly and I were watching the show and be like, "Wow, she can dial it to a hundred. This is this is not like your regular good Hollywood actress. This is on another level." And we've been thinking for a while, oh, maybe she should be right for this project, that project. And we wrote this one, we just knew that I really sincerely can't think of an actress who, who would have done as good a job in, in the role. So, um, so we knew that she would get it. And, and you don't need to like explain too much or psychoanalyze characters. But obviously we, we told her about our personal experience. Uh, she knew it from reading it, that it was based on truth. We gave her, you know, the, uh, you know, information about the, 
what the diagnosis is like so she really knows the, the reality of it so she can do a little bit of research. And beyond that, I would say that my two main duties as a, as a director with, with the understanding that it's different. I feel like if it, I've, had, I've had the opportunity to direct uh, uh, less skilled actors and, uh, and then very often you need to shape the performance a lot more and you need to do a lot more work with them. But I, I just know, I mean, when you're working with actors in that caliber, you don't need to direct them. You don't need to like, okay, cut, listen. Like, so you need to like do things different. They get the role, let, let, let them be. I was very, very hands off in that regard. But there are two things, there are two aspects of directing where I was, uh, where I was, uh, uh, where I felt like I had a responsibility that was beyond just like directing actors in the sense of like, cut, okay, no, we, we want it, you know, we need it bigger, smaller, um, uh, which of course is, you know, nonsense. Um, first, you rarely ever get to shoot uh, in order. You shoot all over the place. What I tried as much as I could and controlling the schedule was, was, uh, was something that I was extremely conscious of when, when we we're doing a movie. So we wanted more or less the schedule of the production to go from light to heavy. I definitely, I, I saved all of our heavy scenes to at least, you know, half of the, in the middle of the shoot. I didn't want to like start off with heavy scenes. And I tried as much as I could to create some chronology, even within all the invitations. But still you shoot totally out of order. Shot like our opening scene in the middle of the shoot, our second scene in the, the last day of the shoot, like completely. And no matter how good an actor is, if they don't know what happened in the scene before, because they haven't shot it yet, and they don't know what you expect, you expect to create in the scene before, they're just not, they're just, they don't know where they're coming from. And then it's really, it's not a matter of, uh, of, of great acting. It's just a matter of like, give, them, give us the information of what's happening, where you're coming from. And if you just don't know that as an actor, it, you, you just, you can't do as good a job. So I feel like a lot of the responsibility of a director is being like, okay, you know, this is day one of the production and we're shooting scene 50 and you have no idea. Yeah, I mean, we haven't shot the 49 scenes before, but this is where you're coming from. This is, this is what just happened. This is where you are. This is like, this is where things have been. This is what's happened in the relationship before to give them context. So that's one thing that you need to do. And again, that, that, that very much relates to, to actors who are like already that you don't need to direct as much, you know, because they really, they get it. You don't need to tell, teach them directing, uh, to teach them acting. The other thing that you really need to do is um, sometimes you realize, and, and that goes back to what I was saying before, you realize that, that, that a scene doesn't work as well. And it's not because the actors aren't doing as good a job. It's more likely because either the script doesn't, the scene doesn't give them all everything they need or the, or the, or for whatever reason, things are not quite working as optimally as they can. And then you need to, and then you need to give them very, very clear instructions on what to do. Because when you're shooting on set and, and you know, you're running out of time and you've done four takes and you don't even have time for a fifth one, you, you can't really try psychoanalyzing characters at that point. That, that's just nonsense and it will just bog them down. What, what is very effective, and that probably goes back to a lot of what you're, you're, you're doing in class, is very clear objectives. I would say an example for that scene is uh, um, when, when, when you guys get to, to see the movie, there's a scene where uh, um, the mother leaves the house. Um, I hate to spoil things, but uh, leaves the house to, to, to go live in her car. And, uh, and the scene on the page, again, it was like the scene where we felt we wrote it, it worked, five lines, we're done. Then you shoot it and it's a, and it's a, you know, and it's a 10 second scene and you feel like, wow, it really doesn't have the emotional resonance that it needs. Um, it, it was just too easy and it needed to be a scene of conflict. So that's, that's where a director needs to step in and, and, and make it work. So, and again, Stefania and Lily did a fantastic job, but they, they're just, you know, they had a very, very short scene. So I went to Stefania and I told her, listen, you can't let her go. You can't, the, the mother wants to leave the house and you know, go live in a car, which is crazy because she, she has delusional disorder and the daughter doesn't want her to. And I, and I told Stefania, listen, you can't let her go. You just don't let her go. You can't let her leave. This is, this is your, your simple goal. Someone wants to leave the room. You can't let them go. Do whatever, say whatever, do whatever. You can't let her go. And, and I went to Lily and I told her, listen, you can't stay here. This is like staying here is, you know, like you can't say just you have to you have to get out of here and and then you give 
two actors to the, two different objectives, and they just you know they just the, this conflict. The, the, and it's very very simple. It's not. I mean, it, it goes back to the most the basics of acting, and that's why I feel like so very often actors put themselves through like such unnecessary hard uh, trying to psychoanalyze characters of what they would do, what they think. Bring it down to the basics. You have something to do. You have a goal. You know that that works in writing too. Someone has a goal. Now you know what you're doing. You know you don't need to be acting. You just need to be doing something. So that's. I love that. I love that. And that's definitely something that they do for acting exercises. One person has one objective and somebody has an opposite objective. I love it. So I would like to, thanks Lauren. I would like to um, end with Mr. Walcott's question. And then so Diego and Arjun, um, I know you're, and River, I think your hands were up too. If you could just put your question in the chat, I'll send it to them. Um, so Mr. Walcott asked, um, for actors and actually writers in the room um, who are interested in writing professionally and begin the journey toward writing a movie and making a movie, can you talk about mapping out that journey or your journey specifically into writing professionally? Yeah, um, I can definitely try. Um, <laughs> I would take my advice with a grain of salt because uh, Natalie and I still find ourselves strategizing all the time. Because if there are clear answers, everyone would be would be you know would be using them as instructions, and there aren't. It's an extremely tough business. Projects that we thought would easily get made never got made. Projects that we thought will never get made. Who's gonna make a movie about you know mental illness and, and uh, you know surprises and got made? While much more commercial projects didn't. Go figure. Um, maybe it speaks to the fact that you know if you have a story, if you have your own, if you have a story that you really know that is compelling and you can write it better than other people, then maybe there's, there's, maybe there's a strength that you have there that, that will make you stand out. But I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we've written so many products that were close to our hearts over that never got made. And, uh, and I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, we, I've written some, some big budget thrillers that I thought would move into production and, you know, and, we sold them, but they didn't. And then we've written, I mean, I feel like we constantly strategize and, con and constantly try to find the answer to that because it, there, there's no clear answer. Also, we're living in a very different landscape. If you told people 10 years ago that Nomadland would be the biggest, uh, you know, uh, winner of the Oscars, they would laugh at you. They'd be like, oh, that movie would never even get nominated. Different times. Uh, and right. times are changing and the business is changing and COVID changed things. So there aren't clear answers. Um, I would say <laughs> I studied economy when I was in, in high school in Israel, I'm Israeli. In high school in Israel, they kind of give you majors uh, to choose from in your last year of school or the last few years of, of high school to, uh, um, um, and you kind of choose what you want to focus on. And since there was no film option, even though I already knew that I wanted to go into film, I took business management and, the, and economics. And I remember the first lesson of economics, um, I think that it was um, talking about comparative uh, uh, advantage versus uh, maybe objective advantage. I'm translating from Hebrew, I'm not quite sure what it's called. <laughs> but the point was that even though, let's say you have two companies or two countries and one sells apples and one sells oranges. And even though oranges sell much better than apples and, 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 you know, and, and, and it's much more profitable to sell oranges than apples, if you're, comparative or relative advantages at apples. If your apples are the best and your apples are better than your oranges, it doesn't matter if oranges sell better than apples, um, you should stick to, to apples. Um, and my point here is that everyone has a strength and it doesn't matter if horror films do better than dramas. If your skill is at dramas and your passion and talent and ability to do something is at dramas, then even though everyone will say, oh, horror films are doing really well, the, yeah, the market is oversaturated in every regard and, and like, like no other industry, I think. And there's so many people going into it. It's, it's a life of despairing rejection. So at least try to think, what can you do that someone else can't? That you have the relative, the comparative advantage that someone doesn't. Um, and maybe this, is, maybe this is an advice that's worth something because I would say a story about you know delusional disorder and mental illness having gone through it we could have written it better than other people because we've because we've lived through it 
and uh, and it doesn't mean that everything that's part of your true life is uh, you know make it into a into a compelling movie. But we but we had the advantage of the knowledge and the and the authenticity that we wouldn't have had if we had written about something that we didn't go through. Um, and you know, and I wrote a big budget you know thriller that was uh, that was uh, based on chess strategies because I love playing chess and I just knew that I can write that character and that and that thriller better than other people. Um, whereas another thriller, I wouldn't be able to write better than other people. So I would say it's trying to trying to find out what is your advantage. What what do you have to offer that other people don't? And even if that thing is more niche rather than mainstream. Um, that niche may be your, where your success is. Um, and the mainstream is where everyone is battling over the same piece of the pie. I love that. Thank you so much, Enon. I really appreciate yours and Natalie's time. This was so much fun for me, selfishly, this was really fun. Thank you so much everybody for coming. Thank you. And then, like I said, I put the, I put the link in the chat for the film. Um, and like I said, if you have any more questions, please put them in the chat and um, I will, try to get you some answers, but thank you so much for spending the thank afternoon you. with us. Can everyone mute yourselves? Thank you so much, Inan. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.